All right, after numerous technical difficulties, we're finally going to get these last couple of videos done for uh, the last section that we're going to do for this semester. Congratulations to everybody for making it this far. Um, we're going to talk about chi-square tests, specific types uh, for goodness of fit and tests for independence. Um, so there's like four types of tests in Chapter 10. We're only going to look at three of them for this course, and that's cases one, two, and three. Um, we're going to start with this goodness of fit test with unequal expected frequencies, which is probably the trickiest one of all the problems. Um, here we're going to test if the proportions given or counts given match the distribution that was given. And that's going to, we're going to see in that first homework problem that's given in a pie chart. Now, it's really important that you get the null and alternative hypothesis correct, but it's going to be the same every time. The null is always that the proportions are as claimed. And the alternative is always at least one of them is going to be different. So that's the kind of problem we're getting ready to look at. So remember, uh, we're considering hypothesis tests of a claim that the observed frequency counts agree with some claim distribution. Now, the next section, 10.2, we're going to consider contingency tables, which consist of frequency accounts arranged in a table with at least two rows and two columns. But that'll be in a, a later video. So a few things that we need to know for goodness of fit tests. We consider the sample data consisting of observed frequency counts arranged in a single row or column. We're going to use a hypothesis test for the claim that the observed frequency counts agree with some claim distribution so that there is a good fit for the observed data with the claim distribution. Now we have some notation. Uh, o, observed frequency of an outcome found by tabulating the sample data. E is the expected frequency of the outcome uh, found by assuming that the distribution is as claimed. K represents the number of different categories or outcomes. N represents the total number of trials or observed sample sizes. Now there are requirements. The data must have, must have been randomly selected. Uh, the sample data consists of frequency counts for each of the different categories. And for each category, the expected frequency is at least five. So from here, let's move on to this first. Uh, well, before we do that, um, how do we make our conclusion? And it's, it is a hypothesis test. We will be using StatCrunch. Now, this particular slide shows how to use the test statistic. And if you see the rejection reason, it's out here on the right. We're going to actually do this with StatCrunch using the chi-square calculator. Um, but the beautiful thing about this is you're going to get a p-value with everyone. And, and just like all the other things, just compare the p-value to your alpha. And you're going to, uh, uh, you don't really have to do the test statistic method, but the questions do require you to find the test statistic. Um, so uh, we'll get to that and again in a later video. And then finally, your, your statement or your conclusion the sample data does or does not provide sufficient evidence to suggest the probabilities. And this one was about a horse race. Um, that's not the one we're going to use based on the starting gait position for the horse are not all the same at a significance level of alpha equals 0 0.05. So the one we're going to talk about is food delivery. Uh, but this is uh, kind of a model for you to use for how to, ha and we're going to see how this works here in just a second. So let's look at that first question. Homework problem, and this is unequal. This is case two. This is unequal expected frequencies, and this is about food delivery. A research firm claims that the distribution of the days of the week that people are most likely to order food for delivery is different from the distribution shown in the pinch, uh, excuse me, pie chart. Uh, you randomly select 500 people and record which day of the week each is most likely to order food for delivery. The table to the right show the results. At alpha equals 0 0.05, we're going to test the research firm's claim. Now, I have everything finished here, and I'm going to show you where, where all this stuff came from uh, in the next few, uh, uh, the next few pages. Um, so when we run everything through, but, but well, before I do that, let's look at the null and alter, uh, alternative hypothesis. So the distribution of the days people order food for delivery is as shown in the pie chart. The distribution of the days people order food for delivery 
differs from the expected distribution. And in this case, this is the claim because that's what the research firm said, that it's not the same as the pie chart. Now, I went ahead and found the chi-square test statistic for this. We don't, this question is not going to ask you to do this, uh, but when you get to the contingency tables, you will. And we're going to do that with the chi-square calculator. Um, excuse me. I told you backwards. The test statistic we will find for all the questions, the critical value chi-square is the one that, again, we're going to use StatCrunch that we'll use the uh, chi-square calculator for. So when we when we run all these tests, you're going to see I'm going to end up with a p-value of 0.00. .00. So that's going to be that's very low. Remember, if the null is low, it's got to go. So we're going to reject. And here's my statement: at the five percent significance level, there is enough evidence to conclude that the distribution of the days people order food delivery differs from the expected distribution. All right. So how did we get all this stuff? So I'm going to show you some screen captures and. The print's kind of fine for me here, but there's the first two parts where we see the null and alternative hypothesis. You're, you're going to be expected to do that. You're going to uh, identify where the claim is, which we said was in the alternative hypothesis. Now, I went ahead and opened the pie chart, and we see it down here. And we also have, and I'm going to pull my, uh, you notice we can download this um, this table into StatCrunch by using that button right there. And I'm actually going to work through the problem. Now, I created this table to show you what the table is going to look like at the end. And at first, you're just going to see these two things. But when we're done, we're going to have the days of the week, the observed frequencies, um, the expected. These are the percentages from the pie chart, Sunday, 7%, 5%, 6%, and so on. Um, and then how, what StatCrunch is going to do for me is it's going to take this um, expected proportion, it's going to multiply it uh, times 500, which is my, your, your question is going to be slightly different, and it's going to give me the expected actual number. So remember, this is your observed, this is your observed frequency, this is your expected proportion from the pie chart, this is the expected number. So when we run the test, I'm going to be looking at the observed frequency versus the expected uh, number of, uh, in this case, food delivery. So there's what my table is going to look like when I'm finished. Um, and you'll have these pictures. And I'm sorry it left that gray on there. I wish it hadn't done that. But unfortunately, but I hopefully you'll be able to see it okay. Um, I'm going to use something for the first time, which is under the data tab, where I'm going to put an expression in to do this calculation for me that's in this expected right here. And when it's finished, that's what the table's going to look like. This picture is better. And I'm going to run the chi-square goodness of fit test, which I've done here. And you'll notice there's my 28.670 and my p-value. Well, they said to round it to three places. So if it's less than 0 0.0001, it's really low, then obviously I can round that to three places. I'm going to round it to zero. So from here, let's go ahead and do this in StatCrunch. Uh, I'm going to pull my little bubble here out of the way. So I'm going to start out. Um, you notice you're going to be expected to identify the null and alternative hypothesis. This part's always going to be the same. Our claim was in the alternative hypothesis, and this is, the this is the rest of the problem here. But watch what happens. This is where it gets a little bit tricky. I'm going to click to copy the table into StatCrunch. And it's making me sign into StatCrunch, which it doesn't always do. So give Okay. Well, now it's open StatCrunch for me. Let's try again to uh, get the data loaded. Good. So now we have, this was the table. Um, and the pie chart, we're going to have to enter that information. So... Uh, I'm going to go ahead and open 
open the pie chart, hopefully. I'll pull Stack, Stack Crunch out of the way for just a little bit. And of course, trying to create a video is when it's not going to cooperate. So let's see. Uh, okay, we have another way to get here. I'm going to go back. Since I've already recorded that information, I'm going to take it from here. And I'm going to put, I'm going to click on variable three. I'm going to put it expected and a P. For that's the proportion, right? And I'm just going to put straight from the pie chart 0 0.07, 0 0.05. I have to apologize. You all know what a terrible typer I am. Okay, uh, 0 0.06, 0 0.13, 0.11. 0.35 and 0.23. So there's my expected proportions here. And this is the this is the part that's tricky. This is the new part that you're going to do. Under data, I'm going to go down to compute. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put an expression in here to figure out that one column for me. And I have to build that expression. So I'm going to click build and I want the expected proportion, so I'm going to double click that. Well, there we go. Had to, uh, now, and then I'm going to multiply that times 500. And I'm going to click OK. And you notice I got the expected proportion times fine error. I'm going to click build, or no, excuse me, I'm going to click pick compute. And look, I have this new. Now it also says expected P. I'm going to go up and change that to number. It's actually, that's the actual number. And now I'm ready to do this test. So if you'll notice that the table looks very much like this one. And now from here, it's pretty straightforward. Uh, I don't need this anymore. I know that's there, so I'm going to get rid of that. Now, stat, goodness of fit, chi-square test. Now, my observed frequencies we know are right here, which is frequency. And my expected, I want the number, not the proportion, so I'm going to put that in. Um, and that's really all I need. I'm going to display, when I click compute, I'm going to get two things. I'm going to get a, the chi-square, which you'll notice corresponds to what we have, on, and the p-value. And that's all you need for this one. Now, this first question is the trickiest. It's probably the most difficult in the whole homework assignment. You'll get through this pretty fast once I get the videos done. But what's different about this one is notice each one of these expected proportions is the same. Um, so the next three questions in the homework assignment after this, I'm going to go ahead and show you. Um, you see with the, this little radio button, all cells in equal proportion? We'll be using that one for the next three questions because the, ne the next ones are from case one, which we're going to talk about in the next video. So again, I'm sorry for the delay in this. Had a lot of technical difficulties. Uh, I will have these notes uploaded, but the video will be ready shortly. And I hope this helps, and we'll have uh, three more videos for this section, um, and then you should be able to knock them out pretty quick. Uh, good luck. Talk to you soon.